switch family today. So, so, so I think God's got a message for us. He's going he's to use me in a powerful way. I believe that. And uh, this message is, is just awesome. And um, some of you, uh, I, don't, I don't know if we have any new faces here, but Pastor Bob is our pastor. He's away this week in Cincinnati with his wife. And he's uh, visiting some friends, but uh, he's asked me to fill in for him. And I've realized, like, I'm kind of like the substitute teacher here. But, uh, <laughs> you know, no, I'm not regular. I'm a little inexperienced. <laughs> well, a actually, I don't have any experience. At all. <laughs> so, God can use that, you know, and, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm believing in that. So, so here, here we go. I'm a, I'm a little nervous, a little scared, but like I said, guess what? The lights are out, and it makes me more comfortable. Come <laughs> God can use any any one of us in a powerful way, and I believe that. So we're in this together today, all right? Yes. All right. You ready? Yep. If you have a Bible, please open it up to 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to take this scripture, and we're going to kind of weave it into a real-life event. Um, it's actually from a video that was taken um, from from a home video in the, in the Kruger National Park. I don't know how many of you have ever seen it, but there's like 50 million hits on YouTube for this video. If you've been at the men's conference this year, this past October, they showed us, or they didn't show us this video, but this gentleman, Greg Surratt, Pastor Surratt, uh, preached on this video. And what it is, is it's, uh, it's called Battle of Kruger, and I encourage you, after the service, obviously we can't show it to you, um, obvious reasons, but go ahead and search it afterwards, please. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to mean something to you, seriously. Um, so basically what it is, it's an eight-minute video, and it's in, uh, filmed in Kruger National Park. Can everybody hear me? Yes. 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 Kruger National Park, it's in South Africa, and during a safari. The video was caught by some guys on a guided tour through Kruger Park, and they caught something that is just absolutely unbelievable. And when you see it, you will agree with me, I guarantee you. And they're filming a group of Cape Buffalo. Have you ever seen a Cape Buffalo? Yeah. Huge, huge animal. And actually, you see one buffalo, and he's just kind of strolling ahead towards this watering hole. And I'm guessing uh, the herd and the rest of them are going to, you know, water down. And uh, and as it pans out, you see that there may be a hundred buffalo in the herd. And as they're just strolling together without a care in the world, and then all of a sudden, one of the guys who's doing the video, you hear him say, "Oh man, look, look, look over there, look!" And the, and that, as the, as the the camera pans, you see uh, a, a pack of lions laying in the tall yellow grass over there. <laughs> All right? So, so as uh, the lions start to see the buffalo, and it's game, it's game on. All right? They're watching these buffalo like, you just see the lions thinking, man, here comes, here comes lunch. You know what I mean? Here comes a nice prime rib. You know what I mean? Let's do this thing. And the buffalo have no idea what's going on, just kind of strolling along. All right, so you get in the picture? Yes. The camera's panning back and forth, back and forth. All right, it's zooming out, it's zooming in, and the intensity is just building. And then the lions begin, I don't know if you've ever seen them, they just they begin to crouch. All right, and the hunt begins. And I don't know if you've ever seen a lion on a hunt, but they are just amazing creatures. That's an awesome thing. God created every part of the lion just to be a predator, to hunt. All right, there's incredible communication that silently is going on uh, amongst the pack, and that goes between uh, the different lions, and at the absolute right second, they attack. Right? Lions are they're killing machines. Yes. They really are. The average lion, it says, consumes 15 pounds of meat per day. Wow. It's a lot of meat. I, I, I come close to that sometimes. <laughs> I would like to. I love, I love my meat too, so I can understand. But here, so these water buffalo have no clue what they're walking into, and by the time the lead buffalo figures it out, it, and he sees what's going on, it, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't really know what to do. You know, he, he acts like there's nothing wrong, but he knows there definitely is something wrong, right? The buffalo realizes his danger, but just plays it cool for a minute. And he's walking into a trap, and suddenly they're spooked, and the lions attack. And this is where we get the first life lesson from the safari. And the first lesson is this. Keep an eye out for prowling lions. Uh, First Peter chapter 5 verse 8 says, your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 
And see, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, you have an enemy who lives to hunt. He's a predator. He's a hunting machine. He's trying to devour you. Your kids, your family, your marriage, your career, all right, your relationship with God. He wants to destroy you. He wants to embarrass you. And he wants to dishonor the God that you serve. All right? He's a hunting machine. What he does is he tries to take away everything from you that gives life. Okay? He wants to snuff you out. Do you know how lions kill? They don't just tear, tear their victims apart. They're very strategic. They go from that. They, sh they strangle. All right? They, go, they strangle their victim until they are dead, and then they devour them. All right? Your enemy, the devil, lives to hunt. He wants to strangle the life out of you. Do we get that? Yes. Do we, do we know that that is real? He wants to strangle the life out of you. How does he do it? The battlefield uh, you know, of the mind. The battle of faith is, is mostly in the mind. Would you agree with that? Yes. yes. You know, a lot of times, we, all we have is our thoughts. You know, in time when we're alone, um, would, you, would you say that uh, he gives us tempting thoughts? There's five thoughts that I want to go through. Um, and I'm sure there's more that you can think about. But the first one is tempting thoughts. He gives us tempting thoughts. He knows our weaknesses. And I don't know about you, but he likes to, to attack when I'm tired. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and he doesn't fight fair. He waits until I'm most vulnerable. And you see, if you fall into his temptation, he begins to strangle the life out of you. He's a master manipulator. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, and he will make these things look so good. And he, he just tells you, go ahead, go ahead, just just do it. it, it it'll be good. And, and so you do it, and then he tells you, ha, you're ruined. You will never be who you were, you know. I can't believe you did that. And he's just a master manipulator. He's just a liar. Um, and he hides the negative consequences behind justifying feel goods. You know, you don't, you don't see it until it's, it's too late. But the good news is there's repentance. God can rebuild and restore because that's what he's in the business of doing. Amen? Amen. Right. That's right. The devil is trying to destroy us, embarrass us, and dishonor our God because of tempting thoughts that we aren't dealing with, but we're acting on. See, some of you are dangerously close to making the wrong move, and, and some of us have already decided to make that move. And uh, some of you have already made the decision to act on these tempting thoughts. But let me tell you, just stop. You know, now's the time to repent. Okay? And let Amen. God rebuild and restore your life. That's what Amen. he wants to do. He wants to rebuild and restore your life. All right? So the second thing is the enemy also plans guilt-ridden thoughts. He helps you remember things that you've already been forgiven for. He wants to stir up old stuff, you know? He wants to bring it, he wants to bring it back up. He wants to, to muddy the waters again see, and bring that up. All right? He helps you remember these things. Um, he plants... Thirdly, the doubting thoughts, thoughts about God, thoughts about yourself. We all know what the doubting thought, yes, thoughts are, yes, right? Yes. We all go through it. Um, discouraging thoughts, you know the ones that, you know, it will never work. Uh, you're a waste of time. You're not good enough. We all hear these things, you know. You're, you're just, you're not smart enough. And he just tries to beat us down. And, uh, and finally, the fearful thoughts. Oh, you'll lose everything. You'll be rejected. It will hurt. He wants us running scared. He does. See, his goal is to destroy the work of God in you and those around you. Somebody said that sin is not a pet to tame, but a beast to destroy. Mm. The enemy's goal is to destroy you, to embarrass you, and to dishonor the God that you serve. He does it by strangling the life out of us. Okay, so back to the story. The buffaloes are spooked. They start to retreat, and they run, and the chase is on. 100 buffaloes, five lions. It's a critical time for the buffalo because every move matters. As you watch the video, at a critical moment, 99 buffalo turn one direction and one little baby buffalo takes the wrong turn. And your heart sinks as the lions pounce on the baby buffalo and he rolls into the water and splash. And this is where we get life lesson number two. Always hang with the herd. Mm, that's right. That's, that's true. true. That's right. The lion is looking for a loner buffalo, a buffalo that themselves, by themselves, apart from the herd, a loner buffalo is no match for a pack of lions. But hear this, a pack of lions is no match for a solid herd of buffalo. Amen. Amen. If you look at lions, they have all kinds of scars from the times they didn't win because a good herd hides vulnerable buffalo. Okay, they hide the sick ones. They hide the weak ones. 
They hide the little ones. Yes. They, uh, you mm -hmm. know, if you ever seen it, you know, the vulnerable ones are in the middle, mm -hmm. surrounded by the big buffalo, and they wait on those who can't keep up. That's right. So what happens, though, is that a buffalo will get separated from the herd and becomes a potential meal for a hungry lion. Yes. And we've seen it with people, haven't we? Uh, they're in the herd. <laughs> They're in a small group, they're in a Sunday service, they're getting involved with ministry. You know them, you see them, you know, then all of a sudden you, you look around and you say, man, where's, where's so-and-so, you know, where's, what happened, you know? And, and this is where we get um, three or four things that, what separates us from the herd? You know, there are a few things. And uh, immaturity separates us from the herd. And 1 Timothy 5.22 says, never be in a hurry about appointing or laying hands on church leaders. Sometimes we're in a hurry, you know, when we see somebody that has has um, charisma and, and s s skills and ambition to make them a leader right away. Mm -hmm. But until you've fought a few battles and experienced a few losses and you've got some scars, yeah. you don't appreciate the value of the hurt. Mm -hmm. All right? When someone gets, you know, too much too quick and can go to their head and then they get careless and they think they don't need the hurt anymore, mm -hmm. you know, and they step out on their own. Um, with, you know, with immaturity, pride can come in and you can start thinking you don't need the hurt anymore. You know, um, we, just, we just ask God that he gives us character. You mm -hmm. know, and character, I think, keeps us humble and brings us back into the hurt. Yes, right. um, another thing that separates us from the hurt is a offense. You know, an offend, being offended. Proverbs 18, verse 19 says, an offended brother is more unyielding than a fortified city. Mm -hmm. All right. Have you ever seen someone offended? We all mm -hmm. have, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> all right. Maybe they weren't invited to something, or you, somebody said something inappropriate and got out, or maybe they just thought somebody said something, or mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and suddenly they're kind of not hanging with the herd anymore. It's kind of weird, mm -hmm. and they pull away from what's going on. And you know that's that's when the uh, enemy attacks. Right. They begin to believe lies, and life begins to be strangled. Uh, another thing that separates the third one is shame. Shame separate, separates us. Genesis 3, verse 9 and 10. The Lord called to Adam and he said, Where are you? And Adam replied, I heard you, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. See, Adam and Eve were ashamed. When there is sin in our lives, a lot of time we'll separate from the hurt. Right? We feel like we don't belong. We feel like we're doing the wrong thing and nobody wants to see us. Um, what a lie. Right. What a lie. When we're going through something, we need we need to be with her. We need to be around our friends and our family that loves us and, and wants to see us do good and, and you know and we need their help. When you're struggling with something, you need the protection of the herd. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. And the last thing that, that separate can separate us is busyness. Mm -hmm. You know, church was once a priority and isn't anymore and you're just too busy. You know. You know what happens when you get too busy. You begin to struggle with stuff that you thought you had victory over, and, mm -hmm. right. and you just your mind is focused on other things. You know, the thoughts, the tempting thoughts you thought you were doing okay with, or you know, are just stirred right back up again, and the waters are muddy again. Now you're busy, and you're you're not with the herd so much, and you begin to struggle with those types of things. Right. The enemy begins to attack, and so if you've strayed, get back in the herd. Yeah. All right, man, get back in the herd. All right, here we go. Back to the story. The little buffalo and the lions are in the water, and the lions are tearing him up. They're trying to pull him out of the water, and after about a minute and a half into this segment of the video, you're wondering, is this little guy still alive? Is he, is he even alive? And then when you think it couldn't get any worse, okay, there's a huge crocodile that comes up out of the water and grabs the buffalo and tries to pull him into the water, okay? So now there's a tug of war, safari style. All right, you got five or six lions against a crocodile with a baby buffalo as the rope. okay? It's just not this little guy's day. It's really not this it's, it, it's just insane. All right, back and forth it goes until finally the lions win the tug of war. They get him out of the water and onto the ground, and the crop gives up. And they just start ripping them up. Story over, right? Wrong. Not quite. Not quite. As you watch the video, one lion gets a little distracted, and he's kind of, you can see him peeking his head while the other ones are tearing him up. And he looks over to the left side of the screen, and you hear one of the guys, man, what, what's that up there? What's he, looking, what's he looking at? And the camera pans over, and here comes the troops. Those 99 buffalo, they're coming back. 
They're coming back. 